Aloha from the shores of Waikiki Beach in, in Hawaii. This is Bear Wozniak uh, with, your, uh, with our show, The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Let's start out with the sign of a cross in Hawaiian. Me ka inoa o ka makua ke keiki a me ke uhana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We're going to have with us today Deacon Bob Evans coming to us from Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to be talking about this, I don't know, kind of weak need. Uh, wimpy guy named St. Paul. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <laughs> yeah! Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're stoked to have with us today Deacon Bob Evans. You know, I gotta say, I love studying the life of St. Paul. I don't know if you can see my books behind me, but I have a whole shelf just based on uh, his story and under, trying to understand his writings. Uh, he's one gnarly dude. I had a chance to go visit, uh, walk in the footsteps of St. Paul with my wife, Cindy, about uh, uh, maybe three, four years ago. We we we, land, we landed in, in Greece and uh, went right to uh, uh, Philippi, uh, which is where, or might have been Thessaloniki, I forget where we went first, but in Philippi is where the first European conversion took place. And uh, you can go right there to the water's edge and you can see where he baptized. You can also see the jail where he was, that he, and, uh, that he was thrown into and, uh, and the miracle that took place when the jailer was converted. Uh, Paul uh, walked, they say, his travels took him well over 10,000 miles. I think it's probably more than that, but he, he, a lot of those miles were walking. And if you've ever been to, to Greece where he, where he did a lot of his ministry, that's up and down. There's mountains. There's every kind of, there's every kind of uh, uh, physical difficulty that you can imagine. And uh, so he was a tough dude. He was he was he was tough. He had to face uh, persecution not only from the the the, uh, the secular world at that time, but even from some of the Jews. So he but he stayed the course. And uh, and so when people say, "Oh, you know, you Christians, you need religion as a crutch," <laughs> we 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 uh, we we use as our first uh, our first testimony Saint Paul. He was one gnarly guy. We have with us today Deacon Bob Evans from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Aloha, Deacon. Aloha to you. It's so good to be with you. We would like, we always like to get to know a little bit about our guests first, uh, your personal story uh, your, and, your, uh, and, and your conversion and your call to the diaconate, which I think is so cool. You know, uh, the diaconate is such a powerful uh, ministry. And and uh, and yet it is it is a calling. It's like you can't choose to be a deacon. God has to say, "Hey, I want you," and then we have to respond. So tell me, tell us about your your, your journey towards faith. It, it's funny that you would phrase it that way. Yes, God does make His will known to you in unusual ways. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my formal training is actually as a nuclear engineer. Most of my career was in the building of nuclear power plants. Mm. And uh, when we came to Phoenix, it was to complete the Palo Verde nuclear stations that are just west of town here. And uh, I began serving as a lector in my parish quite early in life. And at one point, the pastor came to me and he said, uh, Bob, I, I think you ought to apply for the diaconate. And I said, Father, you have to be kidding. I'm a, techni I'm a technocrat. You know, I, I can't yeah. do that stuff. He says, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the to the theology school Kino here in Phoenix, and I want you to sign up for at least one course. Just mm. just sign up for one course, which I did. What well, what course was I, it? What course was it? It turned out to be Introduction to the Old Testament, and I had the wonderful teacher, Doctor uh, Benjamin, and he was an author, and he really opened my eyes to Scripture. Mm. that these aren't just quaint old stories about a people long ago, but it is literally God speaking to us indirectly through the words of an inspired author. And so all of these texts have much deeper meaning to them than what we would observe on the surface. And so I was just drawn into it. 
So I signed up for the next semester. And after a while, he says, now, my pastor comes and says, now you got to go and make out an application for the diaconate. I can't do that, Father. No, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down there. Well, he was a really likable guy and said, well, all right, I'll do it. So I went down, filled out the form. I'm sitting talking to the director of the diac, and he says, Bob, why do you want to be a deacon? And I said, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I do. I, I'm down here because my, <laughs> my pastor sent me. Well, all right, that'll do. So I continued in the program, and I thought for the longest while that at some point the Lord's going to say to me, well, okay, Bob, I was just testing you. Thanks. That just That's enough. But that message never came. <laughs> and it literally came down to ordination day. I'm lying on the floor and I'm realizing, yeah. oh, my God, this is really what he does want. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord kind of grabs a hold of your collar and pulls you along. And, yeah, and little by little. As long as you're willing to respond to the prompting, that's all he's asking of you. You're, There's no sudden voice in the, in the clouds. It's a, it's a slow but a prodding that often comes from those around you that will lead you in the direction the Lord wants you. That's beautiful. It's like I was telling someone the other day, we were talking about this. It's like going skydiving, you know, the first, especially the first time you go, uh, because you're, you're like, okay, I'm, I scheduled a date to go up and go skydiving. Okay, now I'm in the car and I'm driving up to the skydive place. Okay, now I see myself walking out of the car. Now I'm walking in. Now I'm signing papers saying I could die. And uh, oh, what's this? They're putting on my shoulder. Oh, it's a it's a it's a parachute. And then why are we walking towards the airplane? And then now we're on the airplane. And then why is there fewer people in the airplane than there was a few moments ago? And then now I'm standing at the door. And then you jump. And that leap of faith, though, um, is what gives us wings. It gives us, there's, you know, there's nothing more refreshing than jumping out of an airplane except for that, uh, that pursuit of God's will. Yes. And you pursue God's will, will that one step at a time, and then there are those moments when it's just that leap of faith. And then your, your canopy opens up, and you find out what your, one, what, what your purpose, what your calling is, how God wants to use you, and you just begin to open up and move into that ministry. So it's, I think that's a great illustration the way you talked about it, how you just, you kind of almost accidentally, wait a minute. <laughs> you can't mean this. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> well, but, you know, you mentioned the Old Testament. I know when I was in, at Baylor University, I was Catholic, at going to a, the Notre Dame of Southern Baptists. Mm -hmm. And it was about the time that I was going through my conversion experience uh, in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And I remember the Old Testament just, I love the Old Testament. I have... I just, I, I love my Bible. I love, the Old Testament to me was just gritty, gnarly. I keep using that word gnarly for some reason, I guess because we're talking about St. Paul, but there, it was real. You know, it was more mm -hmm. than just, you know, here's this hero that never did any, anything wrong. It, it revealed the flaws and everything else. But in that, you saw the multi-layered depth, uh, you know, of, of teaching. This is the story. Here's a moral application. Here's a spiritual truth that's hidden it like a diamond in all of this. And so I, I remember once Deacon and I, I uh, went down to the beach. Um, I had an occasion where I was working for a New York bank, and they said, we, we're moving you to New York. I had been working in California. I said, no, I'm not. So they gave me a 10-week uh, you know, paid pay, payment. And so just before I started my CPA firm, I went down to the beach, and I read through the whole Bible. I read the New Testament and then all of the Old Testament and then the New Testament again in about a six-week period. And when you do that, you just see the richness, the tapestry, the interweaving of how all these different authors, all inspired God, by God, bring us this truth. But there's this, this gentleman, St. Paul, that mm -hmm. seemed to just um, uncork it. You know, just he, his, sure. he, you know, he just, he, he, you know, you, you know let, let's talk about St. Paul a little bit. Uh, you know, there, there are those hidden years of Christ, but there's those hidden years of St. Paul, too, after his conversion. Yes, 10 years. And you have to think it was during that time of study and, mm -hmm. and prayer that all these, so many of these revelations came to him, these truths came to him. Yes, yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an illustration that what we classically call the conversion of Paul on the road to Damascus isn't quite accurate. It, uh, Paul saw that as his maturing in his understanding of Judaism. Mm -hmm. And he saw that as being called to a mission, not him converting from one religion to another. Mm. It's, that, it's, it's in the following years 
that he came to see the whole role of Christ in the world radically different than initially. He, he saw the role of Christians as threatening his beloved Judaism. They were proclaiming two gods in his thinking, father and son. He says, we can't have two gods. These people are preaching heresy. They're a threat to Judaism. And so he took measures to try to get rid of them. You know, So we think of him as this vicious killer. Not quite. Uh, it, it's, it's, it was someone who was, who was vehemently defending what he loved most his, his belief in God and against these, quote, heretics. And it wasn't until Christ basically called him out of the fog yeah. that he realized, oh my God, there's something here I've been missing. And, and he proceeded to change his whole life. And what I marvel most about Paul is his willingness to recognize what is it that God has given me at that charism that he has given me that I'm to now use to make him known to the world. But we're going to talk about that when we get back. Yes. We're talking with, talk, with Deacon Bob Evans. He's in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Deacon, where can people find you? Uh, actually, uh, I'm at um, stevensbrother.com. You may recall Stephen the was first, the, the first, first, deacon. first deacon. I was thinking that's why you, did, you had that. Stevensbrother.com. Uh, also at... Uh, um, understanding St. Paul from Sophia Press, uh, and my previous book, Walking the Parables of Jesus, from 2019. So We're, we're talking with uh, Deacon Bob Evans. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, you, uh, if you're not doing anything May 19th to the 21st, if you got nothing better to do, uh, we're inviting the men and uh, bring your sons if they're age of confirmation age of, or older to our Man Cave Meetup in Melbourne Beach, Florida, May 19th through the 21st. We're going to be right on the beach. Uh, this isn't going to be like your mama's uh, retreat. It's going to be more along the lines, I think, uh, of the way the disciples were discipled. We're going to just sit sit. Uh, and talk story with each other. We're gonna have certain certain things that we're gonna bring up, but we're gonna do, we're mostly just gonna dialogue and go deeper with each other. So you don't have to sit on your hands and listen. We're gonna actually have dialogue. I think that's probably the way Jesus did a lot of his teaching was probably around the campfire. So at night, we're gonna have cigars, shot of whiskey and talk story. We're gonna do in Liturgy of the Hours through the day, uh, mass, and but we're also gonna spend some time having like a beach rodeo, surfing and things like that. So come to, uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com and, and, and sign up for the uh, Man Cave Meetup in Melbourne Beach, Florida, May 19th through the 21st. 
We're talking with Deacon Bob Evans, who's written a book on the life and teachings of St. Paul. Deacon, you know, the thing about St. Paul that's so so interesting, you touched on it. He, you know, he was, he was Jewish. Mm-hmm. And most and, and most Christians were Jewish, uh, but he had he is more if more than anyone else he was the one that made the church a Catholic church. And I'm not saying by the, by the introduction of sacraments and things like that, but he's the one that made the church a, a universal church, a church that would be available neither slave nor free, you know, Roman, you know, or Greek, Jew nor Gent, you know. He he made he made uh, he he came to an understanding, as you said, that he, as he evolved in his Judaism, uh, he, he evolved to the point of um, recognizing uh, that how how this was to how this was how the salvation really did work, and so I want to ask you about that because he was Phar- Pharisee among the Pharisees in his own words, he followed the rigidness of the law, and yet now some people uh, read Paul's writings and they go, oh well. Uh, sola fide, faith alone, are, are men saved? What what is it that you know? Because so there was this big uh, this big uh, challenge he had with the Judaizers, Christians who wanted people to to be circumcised and live the life of the the law, the, the Pharisaical law, uh, and and Paul somehow broke from that rigidness of that and brought it brought uh, men's understanding into the fulfillment of all of that. Can you that can you give us a good long uh, go deep with that how he evolved in that understanding and how that really what is what do catholics believe about what is about faith alone or grace or or sure sure um we need to um back up just a little bit uh, in our thinking um in my studying of saint paul which went on for for years I came across the writings of a Father Jerome Nere, who was a theology teacher at Notre Dame in the 1990s. Father Nere's position was that in order to understand St. Paul, we have to understand how the people of the first century thought, because their worldview is radically different than ours. And the principal difference was with them, order and maintaining order was absolutely paramount. It was all about maintaining order because they were terrified by disorder. And anyone who proclaimed something that was contrary to the prevailing thought was acting in an ungodly way. If you carefully read Genesis, it's actually a story about how God separated what did not belong together. We treat creation as an expression of God's love. That's not the way first century people saw it. They saw it as an expression of of the Lord's orderliness. And so we, to imitate the Lord, had to be equally orderly. In the case of Paul, he's writing letters to communities that are experiencing disorder. He's Mm. not writing theological treatises. So you can't go to a single location in Paul's letter and say, okay, what he said here is the fullness of his understanding of redemption, or over here is the fullness of his understanding of what Christ did. You have to take a little from here and a little from here and a little from here and kind of put them together and then say, okay, now I get it. (laughs) And and that uh, pertains to this um, saved by faith alone. Uh, Paul never expected that people were going to parse his words centuries later. He's just addressing the people of his times, and he's using those words and phrases that fit the particular issue he's talking about. So when it is important for him to stress faith, he says you need faith. That does not mean you need only faith. (laughs) It's that you need faith is an element of of what is needed. And you have to look to the totality of what Paul has to say in order to really see what's the message. And, and uh, an example I'd, li- I'd like to, to, to mention. At funerals, the most common second reading comes from Romans uh, chapter 6. And it begins with uh, verse 8. And it says, if we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. 
and sitting there in the pews, we think, oh, that's wonderful. It means that if we, if we die in the state of grace, we're going to go to heaven. Isn't that wonderful? That, our, our friend has, has gone to heaven. But you pause a minute and say, well, wait a minute. In the state of grace is a concept they didn't have in the first century. They would have had no idea what that meant. The idea of dying in the state of grace would have been totally foreign to them. So that can't be what Paul means by that statement. Well, then what does he mean? And this is the point you have, to, you have to really delve into what's the underlying message. The underlying message is that it is in baptism that we die in Christ. Oh, yeah, that's right. In baptism, we're not being washed of something. We're dying to, a, to one who has, does not have access to, to eternal life and rising as one who does. So Christ dying on the cross defeated spiritual death. His rising uh, in the resurrection defeated physical death. There is both elements of death to be dealt with. Ah, now I get it. And you notice that all flowed from a sentence that did not use the word baptism, did not use the word redemption, did not use the word crucifixion. Middle Easterners listen differently than we do. We expect the, the writer or the speaker to make the point clear, and we decide whether we agree with them. We're judgmental listeners, not in a negative sense, but we are judgmental listeners. First century listeners are discerners. It was the role of the listener to discern the point being made by the speaker or writer, and it was an insult to them if the point was too clear. So all of scripture are Middle Eastern writings to Middle Eastern listeners. Therefore, the point is not going to jump out of the page at us. We cannot expect Paul's writings or any other scripture writings to immediately jump out at us. We have to ponder what's the underlying lesson here it's the lesson that applies in our times, not necessarily the specifics of what Paul is saying in his time. Modern listeners find that very, very difficult. <laughs> uh, they're not accustomed to thinking that way. But it's a whole mindset that you have to adopt in order to understand Paul. And I devote a good bit of understanding St. Paul, the, the, the book that I recently wrote, to bringing your mindset around to listening the way his first listeners did, know the first century thinking patterns, ah, now I get it. And, and you see depth in what Paul had to say that you never saw before. And, and that's a, a great deal of what coming to understand Paul is all about. And you can't find the entirety of his teaching on this subject or that subject or that subject in in one passage you have to it's look not at a, it's not his doctoral thesis it's not a doctoral for, thesis. for the most part he's writing letters not not uh not although he does although he does write epistles he does he does uh, proclaim uh you know in a teaching format at times but you, oh, have, yes. you have to understand who he's talking to why he's talking to them but when we get back i'm going to ask you again i want to ask you to help us then to understand what is the catholic teaching on salvation vis-a-vis uh, -vis what uh some would say is solo feeder by faith alone by grace alone or the once saved always saved um i would call i would say heresy uh and sure. understand really what christ is saying we're talking with uh, our good friend deacon bob evans coming from phoenix arizona here's his book understanding saint paul if you're watching on youtube uh and it's published by my publisher sophia institute i love those people over there love the people over there uh this is the bear wasnick adventure we'll be right back with more This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Church. Church is a word that conjures up a gunny sack of assorted reactions. You know, for some it raises pleasant memories, but for others, church no doubt summons up, well, a negative response. This calls for a little sorting out. First, church is not a building. Rather, it's a gathering of folks who are supposed to grow in love for Christ and others. In the New Testament original language, church literally means called out ones. 
folks called out by Christ to corporately worship God, honor God, minister to folks, and impact the world with the truth and the power and the love of the gospel. Second, going into a church doesn't make someone a Christian any more than going into a barn makes you a wagon. It's about relationship, not religion. Third, some folks don't go to church because of hypocrites. Well, how do you do? You can find hypocrites most any place. So get over yourself and them. Imposters are everywhere. My advice, ignore hypocrites and associate with the real deal church folk who live and love like Jesus. They're available. Befriend them. And by the way, even the good Christians are still under construction, so give them a little space and grace. Furthermore, if you're following the Lord, you're still under construction too. Takes one to know one, partner. Now, if you're thinking you can faithfully follow Christ and not be a part of a local church, well, you're dead wrong. Two-thirds of the New Testament was written to the church. You aiming to throw away two-thirds of the New Testament? Buck up, boys and girls, and get on with getting on with your local church. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the mama bears to go to deepadventure.com and join our mama bears. Uh, you can, uh, by joining you, you uh, have access to our first uh, one year curriculum on, with video and audio and uh, a written curriculum too on the virtues. And you have access to uh, all of the long ride home uh, with Bear Wozniak motorcycle uh, EWTN radio show, I mean TV show, and a lot of other a lot of other things. So we want the mama bears to go there. We love you guys. You you women are the one are the ones that drive our ministry. Your prayers, we think, are what are the biggest help for our ministry. <clears throat> so I invite you to do that. And for the men, go go to deepadventure.com and join Bears School of Manliness. It, when you join, you become part of the man cave, which is uh, our own Facebook, <clears throat> our own version of Facebook, but we're not on Facebook. And um, and we share and we you know we share with each other and challenge each other, inspire each other, and uh, and then the three year curriculum of the Bear School of Manliness, what which we go through together as a as a as a as a group of men. <clears throat> if you join and it's year two, month three, then when you just jump into that curriculum with us, and um, but for the men, it's a great way, and for the women too, the mama bears who, who where there isn't a, a man in the in the household. Um, they can lead their sons through this too. In the Bear School of Manliness, uh, you, the men can lead their sons on this beautiful journey uh, through uh, 36 months of lessons on the different areas of, of manliness. Right now we've been talking about that every man needs to have a code that he lives by. Last month we talked about every man needs to have a creed. So uh, we invite you to go to deepadventure.com, become a member of the Mama Bears if you're women, or the men join the man cave in the School of Manliness. We're talking with, with uh, Deacon Bob Evans coming to us from Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, by the way, I, I pedaled my bicycle through Phoenix many years ago. I was pedaling from San Diego to Jacksonville, Florida. <clears throat> and I just remember Phoenix 
Um, uh, it was hot. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was in May. It was hot, but it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a. Um, I just remember that I part of the. It was record breaking heat. So it got so hot that the pavement, the asphalt, was sticking to the tires of my bicycle. So I would pedal at night under the stars, and it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And Deacon, we're talking about uh, the, this 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 area of salvation. You know that some people teach that once saved, always saved. I was surfing in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, and the local church there, Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church, sponsored one of the surf events. And so our men were down there, and they were handing out tracks. But there was also a group of Christians down there who I really love, uh, non-Catholic Christians, I guess you would say. And they were kind of getting ready to go and hand out tracks on the beach. And the guy, the guy said, now, when you go up and you ask someone, have you given your life to Jesus or are you saved? If they say yes, then that's just fine. Give them a track and move on because they're saved. Uh, and as Catholics, we would never think like that. We, would, we, we think of that ongoing conversion. Uh, and so... Um, can you can you talk to us about because they take some of Paul's writings and they 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 you know extract it they pull it right out of the middle of what he's saying and people get the feeling that if I give my life to Jesus and I'm saved and I'm going to heaven I got, I got no worries you know I don't in other words I don't have to live a life of faith I just I just made a, a one time confession yes yes yeah <clears throat> given the, the the background we just went through on Paul we can look in a little more detail at his description of what did Christ do and why did he do it. <laughs> in, uh, in Romans 5, uh, he explains that Christ died on the cross as the way of providing us access to eternal life. That this is the freely given gift, that we our salvation has been freely given to us and we must have faith that, 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 that God has indeed done that for us. However, <laughs> we accept this freely given gift by following his commandments and being charitable to those around us. That's the means by which we accept the freely given gift. So it is both believing and doing, or faith and action, that, that is required. That is, we have to accept as a lifelong process. We keep the commandments, we do charitable things for, for one another because we are saved, not in order to be saved. Yes. And that's an important distinction. That's bearing fruit. Christians, means, bearing Christians fruit. are not claiming that what we do earns salvation. That, that's, that's, that's a... <laughs> we are accepting it. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Yeah, so so that's that's also a, 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 an ancient heresy too that that you can save yourself just by living yes. a moral moral life. Uh, but there, is, Jesus said, "Bear fruit meek unto repentance." And so there is this there is this um, this journey. This the, you think of Paul's ten thousand steps, Saint Paul's ten thousand miles miles, I should say, of journeying. Uh, we all we are all on an adventure. And part of that adventure is to grow in our faith. And uh, and I and is it possible for someone who's accepted Christ uh, when they were 21 to go to hell? Oh, most certainly. Right. M m m most certainly. Uh, it's uh, and it all has to do with this concept of being in the state of grace that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's when we came to understand it is what are those conditions that can prevent one from experiencing eternal life with the Lord, we realize, okay, it's a condition of where there's been a total break in the relationship. We have done something or engaged in some kind of activity that broke our relationship with God to the point of where we are no longer able to experience that until we repent, until we take the steps required of us to come back into right balance with him. And, and as Catholics, we understand that because of the sacrament of penance, that necessary step is to go to confession. And our, our Protestant brothers and sisters say, no, 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 why do you have to go tell somebody else? Well, just turn to the Lord. That's not what the Lord said to him on the night he said, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. There is that very powerful involvement of us in the lives of others 
and there's that very necessary step of not only repenting within our heart, but openly acknowledging our fault and asking for forgiveness. And what the priest delivers to us, not on his own, but through the power of ordination, the, the absolution that, that the Lord empowered his apostles to on that night following his resurrection. Yeah, there's, there is, a, when Martin Luther uh, nailed those, his thesis to the door, um, you know, there was, there, he, he said things like sola scriptura, whatever, you know, it, the Bible's easy to understand, whatever it is teaching, it's, it's not difficult, everyone can read it and understand it for themselves, and then Zwingli and him had a big falling out with it a couple of years about how to interpret scripture. And so yes. when the, the Lord didn't just leave us as orphans, he left us, he let, he, and he, you know, he was a builder like you were. He was a technon, you know, he built, we don't know what he built, built uh, but probably worked in, as a mason, probably worked in rock, because that's mostly what mm -hmm. people, people did in that area. But the only thing we know that he built was a church. He didn't leave us, uh, leave us as orphans. He ordained deacons, he, or, or de the, he established bishops, he established priests and the sacraments so that we could have a journey, walk on this journey together. And so the only place where scripture says, by faith alone, is where James wrote, it is not by faith alone that you are saved, but by works also. But the works that, we're, that, that God is talking about is not like, well, you can only take so many steps on a Sabbath, you know, yes. or following that pharisaical law. Mm -hmm. It is the works of charity, you know, the works, yes. of, the, 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 uh, the works of mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so by, 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 our, by our participating in Christ's life, um, by the way, why wouldn't you want to? So if you've been once saved, I always say, don't you want to walk alongside Jesus? Mm -hmm. That personal exactly. relationship. Yeah. Yes. We're talking yes. with Deacon Bob Evans in his book. I keep forgetting to bring it up, Bob. I'm sorry. It's uh, Understanding St. Paul by Deacon Bob Evans. Don't you love, love it when you get your book for the first time? Do you, do you ever smell it? <laughs> do you? Most yes. authors, most authors go. Most authors love the smell. It's real. <laughs> yeah, it's real. And, and like in my office here, you can see I'm surrounded by books. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but what a you know when I was reading all this, all these this whole shelf of books on St. Paul, I was take I furiously take notes and writing them in my in my in my computer. And I thought, oh, maybe someday I'll write a book on St. Paul. And I thought, wait a minute, no, that's that's too daunting of a task. But you did it uh, with this book, Understanding St. Paul by Deacon Bob Evans. Deacon, where can people find you? Um, uh, the, the book is at sophiainstitute.com, and my website is um, stevensbrother.com. Don't you love the people over there at Sophia? Oh, yes. Aren't they Wonderful. just the best? Wonderful group. I, I agree with you. They, yeah, and and they're go-getters, you know? Yeah, really they, go yeah, they are. I love Charlie. By the way, who was yeah. your editor? Who helped you with the edit? Uh, actually, there were three people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who, yes, they they went through it with a fine tooth comb, yeah. and I, I praise them for it yeah. because it's necessary. Because uh, because Paul's letters are probably the most scrutinized yeah. part of Scripture, and so I, I'm I'm grateful for them. That yeah, they that's why terrible. that's why I didn't write the book. <laughs> we're taking, we're and, and it took it, it took me nine months to get it through the diocese. Uh, as a yeah. member of the clergy, we are required to obtain what's called an imprimatur, a permission to to print. Yeah. But in order to obtain that, you have to get what's called a nihil obstat, which is yeah. nothing objectionable. That took nine months. So it's all I it, can say is, aren't you glad writing you're a Catholic? book is not a trivial effort? <laughs> aren't you glad that you're Catholic and that we and that it, we care that it's consistent with Catholic teaching? We got to take a break. We'll be right back with Deacon Bob Evans. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting 
the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha we want to get a give a shout out to all of our listeners of the bear wasnick adventure a lot of people uh hear this radio show saturday evenings on the east coast maybe on their way back from uh saturday evening uh, mass and so we just want to thank you, listeners. What a big part. What a great joy you are to us when, we, when we're out and about. And, uh, you know, when you have a radio show and you live in Hawaii, and we don't have a EWTN radio station here, so sometimes you feel like kind of isolated from everyone. But when I get to go out and I speak at the men's conferences or Lake Otis or wherever we go, uh, and I meet the people that, that, that uh, listen to our show, it's just really a great encouragement to me and to my two sons, Shane and Josh, who are the producers of, of the show, our radio and our TV show. So we love you guys, and we appreciate your praying for us. Uh, and uh, invite everybody to go to the YouTube web, the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. Uh, deep adventure youtube because there you can uh become a member on that youtube channel and uh as my son joshua posts all these up to youtube you'll be notified and you can you can watch it and not just listen to it you can if you like something you can share it with your friends too which is why we put it up in in the youtube format we're talking with deacon bob evans today his new book understanding saint paul i love the way you did this book you went you 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 divvied it up basically uh, book by book by book, uh, you know, uh, of his um, one letter at one letter, one epistle at a time. What did what did you what was your personal journey like as you wrote this? What what uh, what effect did your going on this journey of writing this book have on have on you? Well, um, the journey actually began almost 20 years ago when I first encountered a seminarian who was assigned to our parish during the summer. Uh, a Killian McCaffrey from Ireland. Oh, I like him already. Yes, and he in, would engage me after Mass in talking about the reading, the reading from St. Paul. And I marveled at just how much this man was into St. Paul and the insights that he had. And I thought, oh, I've got to know more about St. Paul. This, I'm missing something. And so that's when I went on this personal journey to begin studying Paul in, in great depth. Uh, eventually, I was asked to begin giving classes on St. Paul, and it was actually the request of my students who basically said, you really need to put this down in a book. It needs to be something that people can refer to, but it's got to be short. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You, yeah 150 tr- pages, and that's it. Yeah, so when you, read the, when you go to, to read the book of Thessalonians, you can, you can go here and get the, the, your, the, the, the overview of it and what to be looking for as you're reading each one of the chapters. So it's... Yes, yes. And, and I recognize that we encounter Paul not in theological treatises, but in his letters. And so you need to organize something that people refer to by his letters. And so that's why I arranged it in that fashion. So many books on St. Paul's are topic oriented rather mm. than letter oriented. And so mm, true, you, you true. get the entirety of a topic but you don't get the context. Who was he talking to at the time? It's so important when he mentions those those random people and you know say hello to so and so, say hi to so and so, to know who those people are and what the impact those people had in his life. And yes, uh, you know. Uh, so so you uh, so I'm, I interrupted you. Go ahead. I got I, I got to I got to. Sometimes I sit on my hands as a reminder not to talk so much. 
<laughs> but 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 let me let me speak to that for just a moment, Bear, because you're doing exactly what Paul wanted his listeners to do. Recognize what is God calling me to do and set about doing it. Mm. And that's precisely what you're doing. So so you're, you're responding just the way Paul wanted of you. Okay? Well, think, well, think about Paul. You know, he, he when he wrote these letters, uh, he, you know, we think of him, sometimes we think of him as being pretty gnarly, pretty tough guy, you know, like laying, laying it down for when he was correcting the churches, for example. But um, his, his heart broke for those people. Oh, it did. He loved those people. Yes. He, uh, one of the things that's, that's fooling us is that in the first century, the style of rhetoric was called diatribe. What one did is they made a statement and then they re would refute the statement. And, and so consequently, uh, the tone of his letters sound more confrontational than he really was. He was not a confrontational person. He was, he was a deep-hearted man. It's that the style of rhetoric of his time gives us that, that impression of him being combative because diatribe was a style of rhetoric that posed one against uh, another. Mm -hmm. uh, he was actually a very, uh, as we can see, a, a very warm-hearted man he, he, who threw yeah. himself into the communities that he loved. Yeah, and he would. He wasn't like an itinerant minister. He would stay there there for six months, a year, years sometimes. Yes. Uh, and, and I love his relationship. There's two relationships that I love love about him that are, teach us a lot. One was with his first missionary journey with Mark, mm -hmm. who uh, who uh, kind of like a young man who kind of ditched him in Barnabas, and and then the and then who later on uh, I believe it was Mark that very same Mark that wrote the the gospel. Right. Yes. Yeah, but yes, it was. That but, is our, but, that's but our when, understanding. But when yep. he abandoned, uh, he says that, that's too tough for me. I'm going home. He abandoned Barnabas and, and Saul or Paul as they were on their first journey, which is gnarly. You need that if you, when you, if you're traveling with the companions, probably because you really need them to be there. And he just kind of bailed on them. And mm -hmm. so it was the it was the reason why why um, they uh, they went their separate separate ways on the next missionary journey, and and, and Paul rebuked him. Uh, and mm -hmm. that young man, though, uh, and Barnabas, the son of encouragement, loved on him. But he had he needed the both. He needed the he needed to be told the truth about how you don't you don't bail out like that. And then Barnabas, Barnabas came along and encouraged him, and uh, and he became the one who wrote the gospel. But then you yeah. saw then you saw this this uh, you saw Paul uh, take on Timothy, this young man, who, and he began to teach him and father him, uncle him, and develop him into being a, a bishop himself. I believe Timothy yeah. was was called as as a as a bishop so um is, i think that's correct but yes. th just that he he developed the he developed uh he he was a leader who not only you know would 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 found a church and develop the people within there but he would actually have these deep relationships with with the men uh, and the women mm -hmm. and and uh and and develop their faith he cared about them and so to read paul and have that sort of eye that eye at oh he's being it, it, i used to read paul and i was like oh i don't want to if i want to read this this is I feel like every time I read, I come under some sort of conviction, you know, and probably rightly so. <laughs> what tell us about who you see Paul as a person? I saw Paul as a person who was so deeply committed to acting upon the prompting that he was receiving that he threw everything he had into it. He he, he abandoned. He, he was self-emptying in the mm. extent that, that that Christ taught. That, that Christians need to be self-emptying. You, you, you lay it all out there. You, you, give, you give all that you have. And you think, but gee, I, I, I can't do that. In, I, in my life circumstances, I have to do this, I have to do that. It's, it's self-emptying is not a matter of abandoning your responsibilities. It's abandoning your self-interests, not your responsibilities. And abandoning our self-interest is really, really tough. And so when we see someone like Paul who was able to do that, we, we, we marvel at it, you know? We say, wow, I, I, I don't know that I can, I, I can reach that man's heights. Well, maybe you can't, but give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 go, he goes before us, and that's it. To, yes. be, to, to love, you know, peop, our primary purpose in life isn't to get to heaven, as some would think. Our primary purpose and purpose in life is to love God back. Yes, and, and get so, others to heaven. <laughs> yeah, but but in the getting others to heaven, it isn't to get them to heaven for our sake. 
mm-hmm. or, or, or not necessarily even for their sake, but for God's sake. And when you, and when you, when you put all that in perspective, what I do is, is for God's sake. I'm going to brush my teeth because that's part of the order of life, the hygiene taking care of my body, you know. For God's sake, I'm going to take care of my wife and kids. Yes, it's for their sake. But there's even a higher calling. This is for God's sake. So to, to our, our, our primary purpose in life, I remember when I took the Baltimore Catechism, is to know, love, and serve God in this world. That's my telos. That's my, my purpose. And so even uh, my, so, so my goal isn't, isn't in this life to get to heaven. My goal mm-hmm. is to love God back. And my goal in this life is sharing the gospel. Yes, I want to see others in heaven. But, uh, but my goal is to, love, to do this for God's sake to see how much God loves these people. And so I I think the best example of that is, it's terrible when I'm rushing to get coffee in the morning or I see someone coming down the street towards my favorite coffee shop, I gotta get there first. You know, (laughs) God loves me best, you know. (laughs) It just, in the littlest ways, learning to yield our hearts. We've been, you know what, Deacon, we we gotta go. Um, We've been talking with Deacon Bob Evans that time. Flew too fast. What, what? Ten seconds, twenty seconds to wrap up your 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 thoughts. Well, um, the, the the biggest thought that I want to leave is that we each one of us needs to ponder deeply on what is the charism the Lord has given us, because that's mm. the signal to us as to how He wants us to make His love known to others in the life circumstances He places us in. Every one of us has a charism that we need to live out. It's mm. our task to discern what is that charism. And, God, and so God isn't going to say, I want you to go do something. Normally, um, God gives us gifts. He gives us desires, different mm-hmm. than passion. He gives us an upward journey and a desire to serve him and, and to make him known. But look at how God made you. That's probably a good, a, a good hint of how God wants to use you too. Thank you, Deacon Bob Evans. Uh, his book is... Understanding St. Paul. We love St. Paul. We're so glad to have you with us on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.